Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm dealing with the worst infestation of mealybugs that I've probably ever dealt with. It's happening up here in our front sun porch on my collection of mangaves and agaves. I'm not really sure how I let this problem get to this point, other than the fact that usually during the growing season, I don't pay as much attention to my houseplants, which is bad. I need to get into a better routine of doing that. But mealybugs are one of those things that if you catch them early, like most other insect issues, they're a lot easier to take care of. Uh, but I thought today we would talk about what they are, what they do to your plant, and then how I am going to be taking care of my issue today. Let's have a look, shall we? Isn't that disgusting? So they're super easy to identify. They have really light gray, soft bodies with like white hairs, and then they form this white cottony material around their bodies. And they usually like to form around the crown of the plant. Like they like to get down into the cracks. They start really making their cells known in the center, and then they'll start working their way out, which they already have on this plant here. This, just for reference, is a mangave called Freckles and Speckles. And it's a beautiful plant, and it's looking actually pretty healthy, other than the fact that it's got the insects that we need to take care of. So mealybugs can come from several different locations. They can come from outside. They could actually come in with your plant, even if you inspect that plant at the garden center before you take it home. Maybe it looks free of insects, looks healthy. Those eggs and larvae could be in the soil. That's one possibility. Um, they also maybe came in with some bad potting soil. You know, you just never know. Uh, but that's why it's just so important to keep an eye on your plants. And I need to practice what I preach, obviously, in that uh, arena. So what they'll do is they just will get up on your plant and they don't move very much once they do that. They just kind of stay put, but then they start laying eggs and forming these clusters or colonies, which is really disgusting. And then when the problem gets really bad, you'll start noticing like a shininess or like sticky uh, matter on your plants and they are excreting, the mealybugs excrete honeydew or feces for lack of better term and it just starts making the plant look really bad and then the longer they're on there and sucking the sap out of the leaves of your plants the more it can damage your plant to the point where it could they could take it. Once you've noticed the problem is happening on one of your plants the best thing to do is to isolate that plant right away. Get it away from your other plants if you can I'm kind of in a position where I'm gonna to have to treat everything in this room. I've got uh, amaryllis, I've got some citrus, I've got more mangaves and agaves that have mealybugs. So this is kind of gonna be my isolation unit uh, for a little bit, but you want to get those bugs away from other plants before they start in on those. If the infestation is very small, you can uh, use a Q-tip like dipped in alcohol and just gently wipe them off the leaves, get down into the cracks as, as good as you can. Uh, and if you do that and check on it once a week and kind of keep up on anything that shows up, oftentimes you can tackle the problem that way. You can also wipe them off. You can use your fingers. I don't, yeah, this is like, I'm not usually grossed out by stuff, but this is at a point where I don't even really want to touch it. So you can use a towel if you want or your fingers, you can wipe them off. Um, you can put them in your sink or your shower and you can give them a really good thorough washing and try to knock off all the pests as you can. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So we're gonna go to the kitchen, we're gonna give this a thorough bath, try to dislodge all the bugs that we can. And I think with that spray nozzle, I can really get down into the cracks in here. And then we are gonna repot this one. And which is not always necessary, but when we're dealing with this, I know I've got eggs in the soil. I know that there's stuff down in there. Uh, and I want to eliminate as much of the presence of this bug as I can. So I'm going to sterilize the pot in a solution of one part bleach, nine part, no, one part bleach, 10 parts water. Um, we're going to repot it in fresh soil. We're also going to spray it with neem oil, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So let's run into the kitchen quick and give this thing a bath. This is gonna be kind of satisfying. Okay, so just a look real quick. I've just been spraying it down for like a minute. Look how much better the plant looks. Now I'm gonna have to tip it because a lot of it probably went down into the cracks. So I'll tip it and rinse out the little cracks and then rinse out the top and I'm gonna remove the rocks as well in preparation for repotting.
doesn't that look like a different plant? Like, I can't even believe how beautiful it is when it's not covered in mealybugs. And I think that the water did a pretty good job of getting rid of everything. I tipped the plant upside down to remove any water that was inside the leaves, but I'm gonna still do a thorough inspection, like in between everything, and then I will remove anything that I see. But I decided before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of this container, remove most of the old soil, probably rinse the roots a little bit, and then at that point, I will rinse anything else off that I find. So this part is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to gently remove it from the container, trying not to break these leaves. There we go. That actually allows me to look a little bit closer what's going on down here, but I'm going to remove a, as much of the loose soil as I can. Got a really healthy looking root system. So that looks pretty good. You really just wanna focus on the top couple inches of soil, removing as much of that as you can, because that's usually where the eggs and larvae will be. They don't go deeper. Um, but I decided just to remove a little bit of the loose stuff on the bottom here, just so I can have as much fresh soil as possible. So now I'm gonna take it back into the kitchen and give it another quick rinse, just to rinse the top of the root ball here and then rinse the base that's more exposed now. We're gonna sanitize this pot while we're at it. Now we're gonna deal with the container and the rocks. they're all super clean the pot the stones even the tray have been sanitized the roots have been washed I went ahead and inspected the base of the plant too and sprayed off anything that I missed and it's likely because this is such a thick plant that I have missed some and that's when the spray will become important but I've got a fresh bag of my cactus mix here so I'm gonna go ahead and get it repotted and replace the stones around the top um, and then we'll talk about the spray Isn't that just a night and day difference? I'm really pleased with it. So now I'm gonna spray the mangave and this will help smother anything that I missed. It will help things from coming back super quickly. Uh, because houseplants don't have any natural predators, we kind of have to act as their predator in a way. You know, outside, a lot of times things take care of themselves. Sometimes they don't and we have to help them along. But houseplants, it's a completely different story because I don't have and don't want to release beneficial insects in my house to take care of other bad insects, if that makes sense. So I do like to take a natural approach as I like to do as often as I can outside. So I'm gonna be spraying with a neem spray today. It's a really good natural solution. It's not a once and done though. Most of the time it's not, no matter what you're spraying, um, because there are different active ingredients and different sprays that target different life stages of the insect. Um, and this one will 
uh, smother eggs and larvae and adults, but there may be some eggs I miss or you know that kind of thing that can still hatch. So it's something that you wanna keep on top of about once a week or once every 10 days for a little while. You do not wanna spray any oil-based spray in direct sunlight. So like where this plant is sitting right now is quite perfect because it's in the shade. It's in a bright spot, but it's in the shade. Um, the other ones here, when I treat all these, I will move them back away from the window so they're not in the sun. So I'm using a ready to use spray right here, which is really handy, especially inside because I'm never spraying anything as, on as big of a scale as I do outside. Outside, I find having to you know, mix from concentrate, it's a little bit more efficient and cost effective, but ready to use is really nice inside and you don't have to add any kind of emulsifying agent. This is like ready to roll. If you're mixing up a concentrate, in, you know some neem oil and water you will want to add something in like this this is a spreader sticker this helps emulsify the spray it helps the oil and the water blend together nicely and adhere to the leaves of the plant so now i'm going to spray this one and you just want to make sure to spray all the leaves underside top side in the cracks around the soil and that's something that i'm going to have to keep on top of about once every seven to ten days so let's get that done real quick So that is how I deal with a mealybug infestation on my house plants. Um, it's usually a pretty easy thing to do, especially if you catch it early. Uh, right now, it's a little bit more of a process. It's not, it's not a hard thing to do. It's just something that I'm going to have to be up, you know, continuing to do, and I'm going to have to treat all of these. So I have all of this stuff, all of this work ahead of me yet, and I'm going to do the same process. Of course, it'll go a lot faster because I'll kind of assembly line the whole thing and do all the root wash at the same time, all the spraying down at the same time. Um, so I'll get this whole room hopefully kind of spick and span and back to square one. And then I can just come in on the next spray cycle and I won't have to take them apart again. I can wipe anything off because it won't have been become a big problem in just a week's time. Wipe anything off that has showed up and then spray again with neem. And again, you wanna spray that not in the direct sun, um, you want to spray it. Usually I'll go through in the evening and spray. That's kind of like my habit for all sprays inside and out. Even though I don't have to think about pollinators inside, I just kind of make it that habit. Treating mealybugs outside is a little bit different because you can't go through all of the same cleaning processes. I mean, the plant stays there. You can't just dig it up and go rinse the roots off. I mean, it might be even more of a widespread issue in that area. I think keeping the environment clean is really important. You know, uh, clean up any debris around the base of the plant, any leaves or petals or any junk that falls off your plant, make it a habit to keep that clean. House plants as well, uh, groom them on a regular basis and that way eggs don't have as much of a chance to harbor over because you might be spraying your plant and doing all that you think you, you know, should be doing uh, not knowing that there's still eggs sitting down there that you're not really targeting. And then putting reminders in your phone or reminders on your calendar to spray the next time will help you keep on top and completely eradicate an insect population like that. It's staying persistent and not giving up. So anyway, that's pretty much it for today's video. You know what I'm gonna be doing for a little while. I hope it was helpful to you guys. I know that these kinds of things just crop up every once in a while, something we have to deal with. So I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye. This is Cheddar's spot right here. He likes this Chase Lounge. <laughs> Don't you bud? Oh yeah.